Welcome to Governing Ourselves, a libertarian atheist podcast. I'm Adam. And I'm Lisa. And we're here to talk about religion and politics, life, the universe, and everything in between. Hey, how was your week? Um, it's been pretty good. Yeah, how about yours? You had your debate, didn't you? Yeah, I had a, my debate at the high school. Um, yeah. It was, it was pretty rough and tumble uh, in there for a while. It, oh, really? I, yeah, I definitely uh, really enjoyed myself. Um, okay. You know, I, I think I have maybe a bit of a, of a taste for it now. Oh, nice. um, wouldn't mind doing something similar again. Maybe not with the same guy. Uh, mm. Although maybe, I don't know. Um, okay. Now, you, you told me earlier that you weren't able to have your, your, um, your alone presentation the atheist side just alone with the class right you had to forego that correct yeah i didn't i didn't get that opportunity because we had a uh, standardized testing in the same mm. week and uh the basically the the teacher had double booked it um okay so uh which is fine you know i i sort of even joked about that i think in the debate where i said you know it's not like i really needed a whole class period to, to talk about atheism uh, mm. because atheism really only has one stance, um, which is, um, you know, we don't believe in God, right? It's very, right. very simple. Yeah. Um, now that may imply other things, but like, if I talk about the nature of morality or, you know, what I base my decisions on or why I don't consider myself a nihilist, mm. uh, these are things that are more my opinion, you know, mm -hmm. uh, about my understanding of the world and, and not, um, they're not, you know, standard atheist, um, you know, beliefs. We don't have a belief structure. That's sort of the fun. Yeah. Different people have different, you know, political and spiritual views, even within atheism. I mean, heck, that's a big reason why we have this podcast, because so many uh, other atheists uh, tend to be politically left. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. And we're not. And we're not. And. You know, so there are things where he's like, well, what do you think about this? And I was like, well, speaking as myself, mm -hmm. you know, here's what I think. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I probably spent a little bit too much time talking about science because, mm -hmm. you know, that's where I tend to uh, base my beliefs. Um, but I'm not a scientist. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, you know evolution natural selection this guy did not believe in uh macro level evolution oh my gosh um yeah uh and he so when you brought up those arguments what did he say well you know it was um here's the thing about philosophers right you know again they're they're they they want to do more like logic gaming than they want to like look at like evidence mm. um so I mean, you'll you'll hear it in the debate, but basically he felt that um, I was taking the scientific method on faith, uh, and, and I was like, well, if we try the scientific method, we can see the results. Uh -huh. um, he's like, yeah, but we can't use the scientific method to prove the scientific method. Um, uh, because that's that circular would, logic. Right, because it would be circular reasoning, and I'm like, but I'm not using the scientific method directly to prove the scientific method. I'm using the technique in a different experiment in a specific experiment to find out if it indeed works mm -hmm. you know it would be like you know if you want to say that the bible is true then you could read it and then you could try out something that it says and then if it works then perhaps that could mean something mm. right it would have um, to be repeatable you'd have to be able to repeat the experiment and get the same results so I, I offered that we do this with the Bible, um, and I suggested that uh, since Paul said that the faithful could withstand um, the poison of uh, snakes, that we get a snake uh -huh. <laughs> and and have him try it. Oh. Um, Yikes! Yeah, we. I I admit I did not have a snake at the time. That's uh, that's good. That's probably that was, fine. That was a bit of a bluff. I think you saw through that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I I think the students were largely with me from the beginning. Mm. Um, you know, so all I had to do was kind of not screw up super bad. Um, right. But I, there are places in the debate where I felt like I definitely got hit a few times. Uh. Um, I think I bloodied him a little bit. 
Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the thing about debates is there's not typically a clear winner. Mm-hmm. Um, You're tossing ideas back and forth. Right. And if, if you, you know, are a strong believer in God, then I probably came off really bad. And if mm. you, uh, although I did have one girl tell me that um, he made her not want to be a Christian anymore. Oh, uh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> really? Did she say I, what I think she was being argument? somewhat. Yeah. Well, he spent a lot of time on the ontological argument. and, and Like you ont- thought he would, right? Like I thought he would. And, in, in, you know, as I was told, he would. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. You know, and I just don't think that that argument is very convincing to most people. Mm. Um, I mean, even the guy who set up the debate, who is a Christian, mm-hmm. he says, you know, I, you know, I have my Christian beliefs, but I, I don't think the ontological argument is terribly convincing. Mm. Um, and, and so we, we went too much back on, on yeah, we, we did spend too much time on it. And um, there were about five questions. I think we got through like three. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, and one of them we basically just kind of skipped over. Mm. What were the questions? I mean, I guess I can find out because we'll be posting the debate as well because yeah. you were able to record it. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I yeah. haven't seen it yet. So um, he asked, I do not um, edit it, so I'm not going to. Okay, um, fair enough. I just had to make little edits, you know, in that well, when we were doing our intros, um, the announcements came on. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, and so... Hopefully right. he'll for, he'll forgive me uh, uh-huh. for that. Um, be sure to be sure to type in the description that that's what you did, um, just so you know. If he's like, "Hey, there's an edit there," you can be like, "Yes, but this is what it was." Right. Yeah. Just for um, just for transparency's sake. Yeah, he got through his his entire intro like this is who I am. And then I mm-hmm. started talking, and the announcements came on. So. <laughs> I think there are there are moments where I don't perform quite as well as I would have liked, um, mm. and so Which areas? all that stuff will stay in. Well, when I got on to things like trying to explain natural selection, when I try to explain, um, you know, you know things like evolution, science, mm-hmm. you know, I just wasn't as tight on that stuff as I could have been. Okay. Um, you know, because again, I wasn't going in with the idea that I'm going to argue from the point of view of a scientist. Mm-hmm. Um, so there were moments where I, I feel like I perhaps reacted too much to the questions he was posing as opposed to like reframing them or to, you know, driving the conversation where I wanted to drive it. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a couple of moments where I do very well though. Um for instance, I say, you know, I, I'm not sure where morals come from, but God is a very bad example of morals. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't think they come from there. Um, and, you know, I make the, the claim that, um, you know, God, uh, you know, is a monster who supports things like kidnapping and rape and murder mm-hmm. um, and slavery. And he's, he's, he basically says, I don't think you can show that. Oh. And so I pull the, my Bible out of my backpack, uh-huh. and it's all tagged up, right. um, and I just read a passage, <laughs> you know, and, mm. you know, but his rebuttal really, um, it was the exact reason why I have such a hard time with Christianity, but with religion in general is that he says, because God is the source of all morality, you know, anything that he asked them to do was righteous. Mm. And that, and I'm like, listen, dude, I may not be a highfalutin philosopher like you, but, you know, I'm just going to go with slavery bad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you think slavery is fine, then we're just going to have to go ahead and disagree on that. Right. Because you will not agree on that one. No, I don't, maybe I don't, I'm not an expert of where morals come from, but um, I think slavery is wrong, and I think it's wrong no matter who does it. Yeah. So. Yeah, no matter who commands it. Yeah, well, and I've heard other Christians make excuses for the Old Testament by saying, well, when Jesus came, he, what is the phrase, like, he fulfilled the Old Testament? Yeah, he fulfills the law of Moses. Okay, yeah. And so basically that's them saying anything that's in the Old Testament like that that's, you know, really highly disagreeable, 
it doesn't matter anymore because Jesus. Yeah. Um, but that's he, still he, he not didn't go very that way. convincing. Oh, okay. Well, this guy did not make the excuse about the law of Moses uh, being old. He said, okay. no, all of that is totally justifiable. Oh. So. Mm. Okay. So um, I think one thing you'll notice is when you listen to it, I, I'm the one that gets aggressive. Um, mm. I'm the one that gets a little riled up. And, and I may have gone a little far at parts. Um, okay. But, you know, shit like that gets me riled up. You know, what can I tell yeah. you? You're passionate about it. Yeah. Okay. Were you able so, to just sort of take a deep breath and calm down a bit? I was I was trying to control my breathing a little bit more. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I think I was foaming about halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> um, still, so is, a, that some, it, is that something you wish you would have been able to control a little bit more? Yeah, I wish I could have done a little bit better at that. There's a lot of places where I feel like I could have done better. Mm. Um, but I, um, I don't know. You know, it was my first real you know, attempt at that sort of thing. Okay. And yeah. I was just going to ask if this was your first debate that you've ever had. You know, I, I did some debate in high school. Um, I wasn't oh. particularly good at it uh, because I didn't care. Mm. Um, I didn't really develop an interest for politics till much later. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I know I, I would say for all intents and purposes, this was my first real debate, you know, and, you know, talking to your family or your friends, um, you know, first of all, you're, you're not going to come at it with the same kind of energy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to attack my dad or my mom like right. I attack this guy. Yeah. You know, I'm just not going to talk to them that way, you know, and of course they, they can't come back at me with very much because they're that's not their thing either mm -hmm. right they're just they're more just sort of emotionally concerned yeah right? yeah they're not approaching you with the idea that we're going to have a debate about this no and some families are different you know some families they debate and argue about religion and politics all the time yeah i think those are called italians i don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. <laughs> So, um, you know, but we, we ended it friendly enough and, um, you know, we shook hands. He invited me to come watch his class. Mm. Um, I may or may Will not do that. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking about it, you know, it to, you know, the, one of the people that some of the people you can really learn a lot from, of course, are your opponents. You know what I mean? Like if right. you have, if you have really strong opponents, then you can get really strong, you know? Mm. Um, so, uh, but if we just kind of hide in our bubbles, you know, we'll never grow. Yeah, you won't grow as quickly anyway. You know, plus he, he kind of stepped into my den a little bit. You know, I probably could step into his. Mm -hmm. Even though it wouldn't do, be a debate format, it would be literally me just watching him teach philosophy. Sure. Um, yeah. Well, a lot, of, a lot of libertarian atheists, um, they like philosophy. You know, they they like just thinking about how things could be or how things might be you know for me i i choose the more scientific route i guess you know i right. yeah. i prefer to find out what is because there's so much that we humans have figured out about what is that i personally don't know yet um but a yeah. lot of people love philosophy you know they just love debating ideas and yeah it, it couldn't hurt couldn't hurt to just sit and see how it goes i think it did teach me that I am very uninterested in philosophy for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think I do agree with you, you know, like I'm, I'm curious about what there literally is that we can measure, that we can observe, mm -hmm. um, you know, even if our emotions and our morals essentially come down to brain chemistry, you know, we still have to recognize that that is the world we have, not the one we want necessarily. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we have to, we have to start taking the world as is. And that that was part of my opening statement. They're like, is it rational to believe in God? And I said, no, it's not. Hmm. Um, you know, and it's a I strong opening. It's a strong opening. I said he's not, um, you know, essentially at a certain point, you can't believe in Santa and the tooth fairy and it's time to grow up. 
And, uh, but you know, for, for him, he was able to, he, he felt that it was exercising more faith to believe in, um, observable evidence, um, than it was to accept God through the ontological argument. So really, we were just going to disagree on that. Oh, you um, have to. there's, there's no way that you can reach an agreement with that. Right. And, and I think at that point I should have just said, agree to disagree. But uh -huh. I, 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 I think I got into trying to convince him and I shouldn't have, okay. um, you know, so just, just tips for me going forward. I, you know, yeah. I talked to the teacher that set it up after and I, yeah, your and friend. I asked, yeah, my friend. And I just mm -hmm. said, you know, how do you think it went? And he's like, you know, I think he did well. Um, but he compared it to the first Rocky film. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen it. Oh, you've never seen Rocky? Okay. Uh-uh. No. Well, How did he compare it? Well, basically, he felt like I was Rocky and that the other guy was Apollo. Uh, the so, underdog? Right. So, yeah, I was the underdog. And it was, okay. you know, like I say, it was kind of a David and Goliath thing. Mm. Um, and the, and at the end of the first film, Rocky does lose the fight. Okay. Um, but Spoilers! He is, no, yeah, I, well, listen. If it's I don't been... know by now, it's about <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's a, okay <laughs> it's really an amazing movie you should check it out um okay. yeah i'll add that to my list it's so wonderful but yeah essentially he has no business i mean just uh, imagine a, a guy who's no one getting a crack at the champion out of nowhere mm. right and then getting in the ring and he loses but he only loses by like a little bit oh and he he rings the champ's bell real hard Okay. And so that's probably how this went down. Okay. Um, you know. And I'm I'm fine with that for my first foray. Yeah. Cool. Well, so you don't feel like you embarrassed yourself at all, right? Like overall it was pretty good. I think overall it was pretty good. I th I think I made a couple of gaffes, but mm. um you know, okay. I think he I think he did too. So mm. I'll take it. Yeah. Um, nice. but, you and know, how do you, how do you when, think the students uh, reacted to it? How do you just the overall vibe of when it was over, you know, what kind of did you get any feedback from them other than well, that? that one we girl? had a lot of we had a QA at the end and is all that recorded the, as well? Yeah. OK, cool. All the questions were directed at him. I, oh. I didn't get one question and they were all very challenging questions. Hmm. So I, I don't know if that's because I did anything or if it's just that was their predisposition. Maybe it's a little bit of both, um, but the I would say by and large the room was with me. Okay. Um, with a couple of people that I think weren't as impressed by my efforts or thought I came off mean, mm. or whatever. And it, hey, I can get mean, you know. That's <laughs> just part of my personality, I guess. Mm. So. So, uh, you checked out conference this week, though, right? No, I tried to. Um, at first, well, last week I um, I tried to look at some of the the articles. They weren't up yet. The the text of the talks, and I tried to watch some of the videos, but for some reason it wasn't working. So I don't know if it's their website or if it's just my script blockers. I don't know. Um, but so I couldn't watch them, and then I got swamped with other stuff. I've also been reading a lot about just current events, you know, religion and politics mostly this week. So right. I've made a list of the different um, the different political topics, the the current events that I'd love to talk about soon. So, yeah, yeah, a couple podcasts of ju uh, episodes of just catching up. You know, since we've started this podcast, what's happened? You know, political, religious in the past, you know, few months or so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, one big thing in the news recently has been um, uh, the arrest of Julian Assange, so I wouldn't mind talking about that. Right. Let the um, listeners know who that is. That is? Uh, he's the uh, uh, founder of uh, WikiLeaks, mm -hmm. and uh, he, you know he has released a lot of um, sensitive information that um, various governments, but particularly the United States, you know, have not wanted him to release um he's most famous 
I would say for the leak that he produced um, with uh, Chelsea Manning, who was Bradley Manning at the time. Um, and that's where we get that video of U.S. soldiers, you know, essentially committing war crimes. Hmm. Uh, and I don't know if you ever saw that back in like the early 2000s. No. Um, but I did. It was hard to watch. Um, but basically, um, you can see why people where we're occupying don't necessarily see us as saviors. Mm. Um, Who were the soldier? Where was it? Um, I'd have to go back. It was. Okay. I think it was Afghanistan, but I'm not 100%. And was um, it... U.S. soldiers um, physically yeah, just, violent with the locals? Yeah, just soldiers? shooting. Like, the the video I remember watching was this guy in a bus, and he's driving somewhere, and they think that he's a terrorist. Um, And so they, you know, they're asking for confirmation to shoot this guy, and, and they get it, and they kill him. Hmm. And, you know, they're they're sort of cheering and that sort of thing, and... Um, you know, it turns out he was just like some dad driving his kids to school. Oh gosh. Yeah. So. Hmm. And so Julian Assange, he's the one who leaked that video, right? So uh, technically, uh, the person that got the file was, um, Bradley Manning, who was in the military at the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then he gave it to, uh, Julian, uh, and he released it on WikiLeaks. Okay. Um, as I understand the story. Now, it's worth mentioning that um, Bradley Manning uh, is now Ch Chelsea Manning because, mm. um, you know, she had a operation. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's worth mentioning his old name, uh, her old name, uh, in order to, um, you know, help you search for it if you want to. Okay. Um. Is Julian Assange, is he American? Uh, he's Australian. Oh. Uh, but he was, um, he's been in England at the Ecuadorian embassy. Oh. Um, and they just, um, uh, basically the, the Ecuadorian embassy decided they were not going to protect him anymore. They were no longer going to give him asylum. Mm. Um, and so they released him to British authorities who arrested him. And now the American government would like to have him extradited. Oh, I'm sure they would. To the United States and um, to no. try him here. No. Well, you know, I'm with you. <laughs> but um, what's, what's strange about it is that they're they're very specifically not... Um, charging him with like espionage hmm. um, or for releasing sensitive data. Is it uh, for tax evasion? Well, it's because they don't want to make it a First Amendment issue. So mm. they're saying it has nothing to do with speech or journalism. Yes, it does. Oh, no, it totally does. But this is what they're saying. <laughs> you know, mm. um, and they, they're not going to charge him with espionage because, uh, in British law, they can pr protect him from that because espionage can come with the death penalty and they don't believe in the death penalty. Oh. Um, so the American lawyers are, or the prosecutors are, are being very specific in their language. Mm -hmm. What they're actually charging him with is hacking. Hacking. So hacking into like um, Pentagon. Okay. Right. So. Um, Did he? Well, I guess we'll find that out. I tend to think that he's not the hacker. He is the receiver of information mm. from hacks. Okay. Um, but it, you know, I don't know, maybe. Hmm. Um, but I tend to, you know, and I think a lot of libertarians probably feel this way. Um, you know, I tend to side with um, whistleblowers of all kinds. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely do. Yeah. I'm definitely on Team Snowden. Um and I'm on Team Assange. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see him not get extradited. I would like to see him get freed. Yeah. Um, 
Donald Trump was a big fan of WikiLeaks and uh, Julian Assange during the campaign because he was releasing, um, you know, stuff about Hillary. So oh, because it was, was bad it the, for was his it opponent. Was it the shenanigans with, with Hillary and uh, Bernie Sanders? Yeah. Just the whole, you know, the whole Democratic yeah. Party stuff. So as long as it was attacking Hillary, you know, Trump was definitely for it. Mm. Uh, but now that he's been arrested, they're saying, hey, Trump, what do you think about this? And he's like, well, you know, I don't really know that much about it. And hmm. it's not really what I'm into. And Just trying you know, to stay we'll, out of it. We're just going to let the, the, the law do its thing. Hmm. So it's like just completely disavowing that he was, you know, he made public speeches in full support hmm. of WikiLeaks in the past. But, you know, my thinking is that he never really understood what it was in the first place. All he knew is that it was something bad for his <laughs> opponent. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to know what he's thinking unless he's typing that on Twitter. But Right. Yeah. Hmm. So that's been going on. Um, I I do think that I don't think that they're truly wanting to get at him because of hacking. I think they want to get him because of what he's revealed and because of what he said. And I think oh, that they sure. want to send a message that, you know, whistleblowers are not going to have a good time and they don't want absolutely. that to happen. Yep. Absolutely. You know? So they can say one thing, but we I think we know what's really going on. Yeah. Everyone does. Yeah. They're not fooling anybody. Now, it's worth also mentioning that Julian Assange has released, um, you know, data that's damning for both sides. You know, he, he hasn't, mm. he, he's not like a Republican shill, right? Mm. You know, he uh, did things that were not good for the Bush administration. He did things that weren't good for the Obama administration. Um, he does not discriminate. No. In fact, um, you know, uh, Bradley Man Chelsea Manning had received um I think it was like twenty five or thirty years in, in prison. Ooh. And um what was it? Uh because Obama, of that video? Obama commuted his sentence or her sentence, and so she's already out. Oh. So uh, you know, at least um Chelsea Manning had some sympathy from the left. Hmm. Okay. Um, so if if you go back through the old news articles and stuff, you can see, you know, where the various sides hate on Julian Assange. Hmm. Um, and where they and where they praise him. And again, it was just really a matter of the enemy of my enemy. Yeah. So well, we'll definitely I, keep an eye on that and find out how that goes. Yeah. Yep. And well, we'll be covering other um other political news. Um, we may take one at a time and just do short little episodes, or we may cover a few in, you know, slightly longer episodes. We'll see. But yeah, okay. we want to, we want to get everyone caught up on, on all the news. Right. And then, you know, even if this episode today is pretty short, I mean, I'm going to post that, um, that debate as long as, uh, Lisa says it's okay. And, <laughs> and then, um. So I'm working be... on trying to get our YouTube videos together so I can post those along with posting these episodes to iTunes. So I'm, I'm just trying to get everything coordinated first. I think some of the students took photos of us talking so we can use those for stills. Sure. Okay. okay. Well, um, I think that's all we're doing this week. Mm-hmm. You know, pretty short stuff. For um, us. For us, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we have plenty from last time. Um yeah, should be should be plenty to listen to. Uh-huh. All right. Well, uh, let's see. If you want to, uh, you know, check out our feed, we're at, uh, you know, governingourselves.com. You can go there and check out all our episodes. You can also uh, download us on uh, iTunes and Stitcher. Yep. Um, and we're on and, we're on YouTube at Governing Ourselves and yep. Facebook and Twitter of the same name. Correct. Yep. All right, well, friends, until then, uh, stay free. And stay skeptical. <laughs>